Okay. Uh, good morning to everyone and thank you for being here today. Uh, in the paper I'm presenting, I'm oh, sorry, I'm reading, but just to be sure to be on time. <laughs> in the paper I'm presenting uh, today, I want to discuss some of the results uh, from the analysis I'm conducting on flow sequences and plaster materials at the Middle Bronze Age secret site of Erimila Unintu Poraku. Uh, I'm one of the leading members uh, of the Rimi archaeological project, together with my colleague Francesca, that is seated over there that since 2009 has the aim of studying the role of this prehistoric community into the social, cultural and economic transformation that characterized the Middle Bronze Age <laughs> period in Cyprus. So it is extremely important to mention that the Middle Bronze Age of Cyprus represents an important period of secret prehistory. It is during this period, and especially in uh, its latest phase, that new social identities, roles, and relationships emerged, transforming the household based society of Charcolitic and Early Bronze Age communities into a more complex social system that is typical of late Cypriot urban centers. So, why study flow sequences? What is their contribution in the analysis of such complex issues as the emergence of uh, community identity and social complexity? Uh, flows are extremely important. They are key data set of cultural evidence in archaeological context as they offer potential for detecting and interpreting the spatial convention through which economic and social relationships are represented and negotiated during the life history of buildings and settlements. I have selected micromorphology as principal high resolution analytical tool to examine floor cluster sequences uh, at Erimi. And in this study, I incorporated micromorphology into a well integrated interdisciplinary research program in order to examine and compare results in interpretation from stratigraphic sequences of field deposits with those uh, from microscopic and geochemical analysis of microstratigraphic <coughs> sequences. Micromorphology is coupled with FTIR and XRF analysis as high resolution analytical tools to examine flow cluster sequences within buildings and to analyze materials and technology in floor cluster manufacture and identify spatial and temporal variation in use and concept of space at the Rimi. <coughs> the methodological framework applied in this study is aimed at generating an interdisciplinary data set with which to analyze the study context at different spatial and temporal scale in order to investigate the social, cultural, and economic transformation of the Rimi during Middle Bronze Age Cyprus by analysis of source materials, properties, and technologies in the manufacture of flows as indicator of ecology and material engagement, labor organization, and technological specialization impacts of activities and events on flow surfaces as indicators of continuity and change in the use of space. Before introducing some of the main results of this research, I want to briefly present the design of Benini, which has been selected for this study as it includes a range of key contexts to analyze the rec and reconstruct everyday practices in the construction, use, and maintenance of floor cluster within buildings. Okay, the site of Erimi Launin to Poraku was first identified in 2007 as a result of a survey project in the middle and lower valley of River Kuris in the southern region of Cyprus. From a geologic, uh, geological perspective, the study area is included in the Circumtrodos sedimentary succession and is characterized by the carbonate sedimentation of the Miocene Pacna formation which consists of a succession of yellowish mulls, chalks, and limestone. The limestone outcrops correspond to the Avara and Kafkala deposit, which are local terms for secondary limestone formation. These limestone materials have served, together with uh, local calcareous and alluvial soil, as essential source of raw materials for the building interest industry in both the recent and uh, most distant, more distant past. Dedicated fieldwork analysis conducted by the Italian archaeological project directed by Professor Luca Bombardieri of the University of Torino 
has revealed that the settlement of Erini was organized in distinct functional areas constructed of sloping limestone terraces. On the top of the hill, uh, there is the productive area A, which has been identified as multifunctional workshop, principally designed for dyeing and textile activities. On the first sloping terraces, the domestic area B, and uh, on the lower southern terraces, the cemetery, the area E. The analysis of ceramic assemblage, uh, together with radiocarbon analysis, indicate the initial phase of the settlement occupation during the very beginning of Middle Cypriot period and the abandonment phase before the beginning of Late Cypriot period. The building technique adopted to construct the settlement with building carved directly into the limestone foundation bedrock contributed to a good preservation of building structure and the positional sequences. As you can see from this schematic graph, which illustrates the building technique used in the construction of the settlement, building units function as containers uh, that preserve deposit in situ and prevented them from degradation and dispersion by water and wind. By contrast, open areas uh, are and were more exposed to natural agencies, and therefore the information we can get from these spaces are much more mm -hmm. limited, unfortunately. The integration of micromorphology with spectroscopic and geochemical analysis provided an effective framework to examine four materials and their manufacture as indicator of technological and social practices at Erimi. First of all, data suggests that the soft Avara limestone was preferred to other Taftala limestone in the production of plaster types due to its greater porosity and workability. Local limestone was mixed with uh, inorganic and organic tempers and manipulated to produce diverse flow plaster types. By means of micromorphology, for example, uh, identify the use of limestone sand of the, on the basis of the sharp and angular shape of inclusion and the occurrence sometimes of an altered bioplast, which suggested that the limestone was not subjected to uh, calcination and firing. While the use of organic additives in floor plaster analyzed is testified by the occurrence of more than 5% sterilites that they have identified in some of the plaster analyzed as clustered components and that are possible relic to animal dung. In general, the procurement of raw materials seems to be based on local resources and the process of selection and modification of natural materials demonstrate a profound knowledge of the local material properties and an established engagement with the natural environment of the Kuris Valley region. Micromorphology and spectroscopic analysis were further applied in this research to analyze pyrotechnological process involved in the production of lime plaster. Preliminary analysis conducted in the field suggested that presumed fire line plaster are generally harder and less soluble than those, than those produced with unfired lime. Micromorphology supplemented this preliminary analysis uh, and revealed that presumed fire line plaster are characterized by round micropores and bugs from ev evaporation of water content, content during setting and calcite microaggregates which may pertain to reacted or partially reacted uh, lime. However, these characteristics are not always easily detectable in case of incomplete calcination of the carbonate source used for plaster production. So FTIR spectroscopy was applied in the analysis of flow plaster and natural calcite sample with the aim of supporting micromorphological analysis in the identification of fired and unfired lime plaster. However, data resulting from this analysis did not, did, uh, did not provide clear evidence for the pyrotechnological production of plasters at Erini and suggests that if the carbonate source was heated, it probably did not reach a high, high enough temperature to transform fully into pyrogenic calcite. However, because the analysis of lime uh, used in prehistoric sites is of major interest for understanding the technological development associated with the emergence of complex society, I will improve the, core, the current data set by conducting further analysis on plaster materials from Erini at the laboratories of the Weizmann Institute in the coming <coughs> year. 
Data from archaeological cluster will be compared with data resulting from the analysis of experimental cluster that we produced during the 2018 fieldwork campaign. Uh, I have to say that it was uh, an interesting and even funny experience. Uh, we realized an open air uh, fire uh, to produce quick lime, and then we mix quick lime with different aggregates, aggregates to produce different cluster types. The analysis of experimental clusters it is extremely important as it will provide comparative data to refine the identification criteria from the presence of lime in archaeological cluster samples. Integrated analysis conducted at the RIMI permitted to identify the occurrence of four different flow cluster types that were manufactured according to specific recipe and applied in buildings depending on their design function. For example, brown sandy clay loam plaster were laid on multifunctional working spaces due to their compact micros microstructure and their hardness. While white silty clay floor plaster were applied in small annexes. The introduction of this floor plaster represents a clear marker of the temporal variation in the use of space of these annexes, which were used as open working areas during the earlier occupation phase of the settlement and turned into roofed spaces during the later occupation of the settlement. The identification of specific recipe in floor plaster production has important implication as it suggests that the production was most probably by workers specialized in building tasks and the recurrence of this plaster type across the settlement suggests that the production was organized at a communal level. In fact, mm -hmm. if the production of plaster was con conducted at household scale, we may expect to find a specific floor plaster type spatially limited to one building or few related buildings. On the contrary, floor plaster appear to have been produced depending on specific uses of buildings and spaces where they were applied. Finally, pl floor plaster, other than revealing sensible indication of uses of materials and labor organization, <laughs> are highly representative of sociocultural convention within buildings. The application of diverse floor plaster types, especially during the later occupation phase, contributed to enhance the definition of distinct spaces within buildings, as, a, as a, exemplified by building as safe as this building was initially organized as a large single space and during the later occupation work was reorganized in three distinct rooms by the introduction of diverse floor cluster type, as you can see here. The increasing segmentation and the subsequent creation of more private rooms within buildings have been identified and interpreted as evidence of increasing social complexity in ancient communities. As demonstrated by ethnographic studies, house interiors are likely to become more ideologically and physically segmented as household members an increasing number of tasks to perform. In this research, the identified trend towards a segmentation of building space may be interpreted as manifestation and representation of the functional specialization which characterized the increasing complexity at the RIMI uh, during Middle Bronze Age Cyprus. To conclude, the application of an interdisciplinary scientific approach based on integration of high resolution analysis offered a robust analytical framework with which to analyze floor sequences and reconstruct social cultural practices and histories at the RIMI. The analysis of the positional sequences has permitted us to shed new light into the dynamic scenario of social organization and development during Middle Bronze Age Cyprus, contributing to delineation of a range of potential avenues for studying evolutionary pathways and social cultural trajectories by using those sequences as key data set of cultural evidence. I keep on with some advertisement, and if you, <laughs> you can find a more exhaustive um, like presentation of data, uh, including uh, uh, many other like analysis conducted on flow sequences that are more specific in the paper that has been recently published in the Journal of Archaeological Site Report. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.